This is a preview of the uh, lecture video on the topic sonography of the gastrointestinal tract. Short clippings of the various parts of the entire lecture video will follow for your preview. Having gone through the preview, if you wish to listen to the main lecture video, go to sonoshare.in. Gastrointestinal tract, the normal appearance of um, uh, bowels, abnormal appearance and how to uh, uh, the bowel. And uh, next unique uh, uh, feature is the distensibility of the bowel you know, with uh, fluid and gas and with the build of the or the BMA of the individual because of the penetration, the gaseous state of the indi particular individual where the uh, GIT is there. And uh, when you scan using the convex probe, it is featureless. You are not able to identify much know that the bowel is intimately associated with the mes its mesentery and uh, normally we don't look for the mesentery so he has mixed with the fecal mass in the colon and in the uh, longitudinal scan you will see the interrupting hostrations so that mass is displaced and you see the nice um, empty colon with the uh, thin uh, uh, lesion within the lumen uh, of course, it is rare and there may be an abnormal gas pattern. You have seen the normal and uh, you see active peristalsis. The active peristalsis is prolonged and it is propulsive and uh, uh, vigorous and there is in between bowel, but uh, there, it is not peristalsis. It is short and it is synchronous with respiration. So that uh, differentiates if you're diagnosing obstructed dilated loops you go to the right iliac fossa next step so in the right iliac fossa if you don't see dilated uh, loops and you see that uh, the normal appearance of the cecum the obstruction is somewhere in between so it may be in the jejunum or it may be in the ilia so you so it is you di you diagnose that suddenly it stops and you see the narrow lumen with the short segment thickening of the wall that is a small bowel structure so then you is you will see that the, there is an uh, adhesive band, very thick band, and then you see the collapsed loop with the bowel signature, and there is this of the bowel lesion. You may see a thick walled bowel, or you may see intraluminal uh, lesion, or it may be an extra seal enhanced because of the thickening. So this is called stratified. Still, the stratified layers are seen. So it is a, this is a longitudinal scan and a, a short axis. Now here, uh, this is a patient, um, uh, with presenting with uh, pain abdomen and uh, loose tools in the right iliac fossa you see that there is a stratified thick pain abdomen and bowel symptoms and uh, here you see a long segment thickened bowel, bowel with still the retaining the thing of the bowel wall and uh, there are a few enlarged mesentery uh, lymph nodes so this is uh, this can involve either the recent onset of acute abdominal pain and when you do the scan, you see a loop of bowel uh, in uh, thick wall, but still the stratified uh, wall, the layers are seen. So that is uh, stratified uh, uh, open heart surgery on anticoagulants and uh, presenting with acute abdominal pain and distension. You see uh, the th uh, thick walled loop of bowel and that is a long axis again. Thick. Then we come to uh, patient presenting with fever and uh, 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 diarrhea and in the right iliac fossa you see uh, the uh, stratified wall thickening and uh, this is the long axis you see the cecum blind ending cecum again the layers are seen similar to stratified wall thickening now here this is a patient presenting with uh, diarrhea and pain abdomen and the fever and uh, you see uh, in the uh, left side of the abdomen know that the uh, characteristic feature is, is fistula formation so even in the small bowel you can get uh, fistula formation with other organs even in the cold bowel which is in convex it appears like that and when you do the uh, high frequency scan you see the typical non-stratified thickening so here you don't see the layers so that is uh, uh, thickened and you don't see the uh, layers so that is non-stratified thickening and the lumen is filled with gas so that is the pseudo kidney appearance so indicating uh, a tumor like lymph uh, what is called the apple core or the target appearance now in short axis it appears like a target it is non-stratified thickening short segment rectified thickening of the 
bower. You see the non-stack effect thickening in high frequency, and you see the mesentery. Mesentery is thick and echogenic. Unity with the bower. You see that is the bower signature, adjacent bower. But when you see the wall, so this mass is seen here. Uh, typical appearance of a lymphoma. You see non-stack effect thickening of the bower. That is the pseudo kidney appearance. That is a long axis scan. You see the uh, here in contrast. You see thick wall of the bower. and you see gas within the wall how to say that it is in the wall you see the uh, it is like looking like a circle it is the a peristaltic and you see within the wall you see mural gas so all you see a crater filled with uh, that is with the air trapping that is outlined by the gas so this is so that is due to the hypertrophied mucosa and within the mucosa you get air trapping due to ulcerations that is uh, also it can be a mass of ascariasis particularly in children presenting with acute colic you see the typical the, the here you see a mass what is uh, typical of this mass is you see gas outlining the mass all around except this area so that means it is within the lumen with a pedicle and of course when you use color you see the flow with a pain abdomen vomiting indicating bowel obstruction and the bowel loops were dilated on tracing the dilated loop you end up in a, a mass which is some you see a large echogenic mass with shadowing and that is the uh, uh, in contrast here you see the dilated small bowel loops but what is lacking is the uh, gas bubbles again colon but what is uh, uh, what you see is the gas uh, filled out pouching from the colon which is uh, Uh, that in the right iliac fossa you see a, a dilated loop uh, filled with fluid and micro bubbles and that is a long axis scan you see a dilated featureless bowel that means it is ileum so instead of cecum indicating that it is a small bowel and it shows peristalsis you see the peristalsis but the proximal loops are absolutely normal the cold but when you come to descending colon it is collapsed absolutely collapsed and normal so in high frequency you see with compression that is the normal colon so how why uh, the proximal colon is dilated uh, appearances of abnormal conditions of bowel but how to pick it up so uh, that is important so what is the protocol so protocol may be where the patient points that he has got pain so this is very useful technique second is palpation using the ultrasound probe so using that so here you see by sonar palpation patient uh, pointing to a, a point of uh, pain so where you see a thick walled bowel loop with central uh, ecopore area and an ecopore rim all round with again echogenic fat around it so this is typical appearance of epiploic appendagitis colonic diverticulitis again in the left iliac fossa here you see the normal uh, uh, colon and uh, fever and when the rest of the abdomen was normal but there was uh, resistance in the uh, left hypochondrium at that time you see the left upper quadrant was full and scan showed a large uh, fluid distended and uh, gas filled uh, uh, paraduodenal or parasical area you see a mass of collapsed loop of bubbles as if the collapsed loops are within um, a bag of uh, uh, is acutely distended again what is happened is that it is densely distended but again you see there are no micro bubbles the reference itself can be uh, will be as uh, for this diagnosis so the clinical reference may be hypertrophic stomach this uh, when the clinical diagnosis clinical suspicion of hps you must feed the child and then do the scan so the stomach will be high frequency you see the iota ivc anterior to iota supemesentric artery and you to the right of superior mesenteric artery you see the sign of valvulus both on color uh, gray scale and color and in real time you see the whirlpool sign and intersusception is typically they refer as intersusception because of the clinical presentation uh, with a di diarrhea uh, pain abdomen and then and the rest of the bowel loops are normal so what is uh, uh, the clue is absent peristalsis so rest of the bowels so but in this with the clinical history you you suspect a polyp and uh, use high frequency you see the nice uh, polyp 
outlined by gas all in a, a separate lecture and mesenteric abnormality and gas gas also we will see in a separate lecture and that is the jejunal loop adjacent and what is classical is the the bowel signature in the wall of the cyst and uh, this is a tubular uh, and the lesion is uh, adjacent to the jejunum it shows thick walls and gas there is a large mass you see the mass uh, adjacent to a bowel and uh, continues with the bowel that is continuity and then the rest of the abdomen is normal only clue is this echogenic fat between the left lobe of liver and stomach so this is not normal and you thick wall loops but you see the mesentery it's markedly enlarged and echogenic and that is the uh, longitudinal scan you see. this is uh, the echogenic mesocolon and then uh, you extend your scan and you see the sigmoid and you see a an wall pool here which is not very well seen in the static image but you see in when you move that probe you see the nice whirlpool sign uh, in 15 days patient is symptomatic so it was not taken as acute uh, ileocolitis so more of amoebic uh, uh, amoebiasis colonoscopy by the time the culture came as tuberculosis positive so patient was put on uh, ATT uh, from uh, May and uh, follow up of the patient is very crucial and uh, your straight the diagnosis may not be straightforward uh, many times thank you very much for your